Andrew Fleming, director of Recreation Soccer. Flem, first of all, thank you for sitting down and joining me. Thank you. Thank you. So obviously a little crazy with COVID and the mask and stuff like that. So uh, Recreation Soccer is part of our DNA here at Fusion. Kind of talk about how the season went for fall 2020 and um, just your thoughts on sure. it. Sure. Well, the first thing, the first thing, uh, we just got our end of season survey results back um, and and people were asked did your child feel safe one to five five being the highest and the average was 4.8 awesome. which is through the roof um, with the average over a large number of responses was 4.8 out of five did your child feel safe uh, so if nothing else happened We'll say the season was a tremendous success, uh, given the circumstances. People went into the fall not really knowing. I mean, we were still, back in August, uh, unclear about so many things from a COVID standpoint, uh, from a guideline standpoint. Um, so the next question people were asked, uh, rate one to five, did your child have fun? Uh, and the average was 4.68. Uh, still absolutely through the roof. Um, so, you know, when you ask was it a success, when you ask how we did, um, you know, we had 65% of our normal numbers, and from an admin standpoint, it was double the work. Um, we had less kids, but it was double the work, uh, but people felt safe uh, and kids had fun. Absolutely tremendous success. Uh, given the circumstances and given those criteria. Absolutely. So again, with COVID, I'm sure that changed a lot. What were kind of some precautions that you guys took um, to kind of make sure the kids were safe? You said everyone had a safe experience. And so kind of speak on that for a second. Sure, sure. Um, first of all, coaches did a great job. Coaches were asked to coach in a mask, um, which is not that big of a deal today. We've gotten used to it. It's 51 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, but coaches were asked to coach in a mask when they hadn't done it before, when it was September 2nd in North Carolina and it was 92 degrees uh, and humid. Um, and, you know, they, they did it. Uh, parents were asked to wear a mask on the sideline um, and social distance when they can. Um, and for the most part, they did it. People that were on the sideline were in a mask People that were 10 yards off the sideline and 10 yards away from the next family, uh, some were in a mask, some were not. Um, there, there was signage put out, there were lines as to, hey, this is where you can be, this is where you can't be. Uh, we spread the schedule out a little more, uh, so a game might end and then there might be 15 minutes of a dead period before the next game started. Uh, we did all those things, uh, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what makes it safe um, is parents took the kids' temperature before they brought them to practice. Awesome. Uh, parents and players wore masks coming to and from the fields when they're passing each other in the parking lot. Coaches wore masks. You know, people took the responsibility uh, seriously. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and that makes all the difference. Absolutely. So, sounds like a successful um, fall season. So, what are kind of the st next steps for uh, Reg as far as spring? When does registration open up? What are you guys kind of looking for for the spring? And then we'll wrap up here. Yeah, uh, so registration is open now. Okay. Um, you can go in there, you can register, you choose which team you want to be on. Um, some teams are already full. Okay. Uh, we'll, awesome. we'll start at the end of March. Uh, there are a handful of teams uh, in the West, in Winston, uh, that are full. There are a couple of teams in uh, the East and Greensboro that are close to full uh, already. Um, so the registration's open, we'll start the end of March. Um, you know, obviously there is, uh, there will still be some uncertainty with regards to facilities in the East, uh, in Greensboro. Will we get to use the Guilford County Schools uh, or will we have to find some alternate locations like we did in the fall? Um, but outside of that, you know, uh, kids were able to play, which they desperately needed. Absolutely. You talk to any parent, you talk to any kid, um, and, and say, did you need to be outside? Did you need to socialize with other kids um, when you maybe can't go to school and some of these other? They absolutely need it. 
Um, so we'll provide it. Uh, and we'll do it in a safe way and we'll do it in a fun way. That's awesome. So last question here. Everyone always talks about how awesome the rec program is. What is it that you think, in your opinion, just makes your program so special that makes kids want to come back? Um, first of all, that's almost everyone. <laughs> um, there are some. Yeah. Almost everyone. Yeah. And, and what makes the difference in, in recreation soccer, um, what makes it unique is there's no tryouts, uh, there's none of that. So, so if you want to play with your buddy, you can play with your Absolutely. buddy. Um, and who makes the biggest impact on these players uh, is the parent volunteer coach. The parent volunteer coach, uh, we have absolutely fantastic people. Mm -hmm. Almost every single one of them. Almost every single one of them. Um, and they, they volunteer their time, they volunteer their efforts, they volunteer their energy. They impact 8 to 10 to 12 to 14 kids, anywhere from 4 years old to 16, 17 years old. And, you know, we make schedules and rules and rent fields and hire referees and all that stuff. So coaches make the league. Absolutely. The volunteer parent coaches make the league. Uh, and, and, and they're just absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. Well, Andrew, thank you so much.